Hello, and welcome to Your Sparkly Brand, the podcast for badass, game-changing business owners who aren't afraid to sparkle and stand out. Here, we're all about fighting the status quo and marketing and branding so that you can reach more people and make more money. Coaches, creatives, and thought leaders, here you'll discover how to become magnetic AF so that you can build and scale your sparkly empire. I'm Megan Gersh, your bold AF branding and website designer, and I'm here with my co-host, the copywriting queen, Lauren Tassi. Hey, Lauren, how are you? Hey, Meg, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What was your sparkly moment this week? So actually a little bit earlier today, I went to work with my husband, Jerry, in <laughs> his downtown office. But the reason for that is that he actually got booked on a quick little lunchtime comedy show. But yeah, it was really, really fun to kind of have that flexibility in my schedule and be able to go down there and support him. I feel like lunchtime office comedy would do really well. Like, I just feel like those are people who just like need a break and like want to laugh. That's uh, that's really great. What about you? What was your sparkly moment? So my business has been slow lately. I can attribute that to a number of things, but it is, you know, on the bright side, I am doing all these things that I literally have put off for a year, 18 months, you know, writing my own case studies, updating my portfolio, doing these like trainings that I've just like had, a, had access to, but haven't taken. So it does feel good to at least keep things moving in that direction and, you know, feel like, okay, let's do this stuff we have time for now because I'm believing it will pick up soon. That's always a good feeling too, especially when you've had the chance to like go back and look at like cool stuff that you've done and like put it into a case study. Yeah, exactly. And do you know what else would be super sparkly if our listeners left us a review? So if you're a fan of the podcast, we'd love to hear from you because it helps us grow. You can like write an actual review on Apple Podcasts or like click the stars on Spotify, wherever you're listening. That would really help us so much. Thank you. So let's get into our topic for today. And we are talking about USPs which stands for unique selling proposition. This is the thing that makes your business different from everyone else out there in the world. It's like your sparkle, right? What makes you stand out? It's why you have a business, right? Because if your business is a carbon copy of someone else's business, why would you even bother? Like it's just never going to work. And it's what makes your customers choose you over everyone else. Maybe you have amazing customer service. Maybe you have amazing packaging. Maybe it's the way you make people feel. Maybe it's something in your messaging. Maybe it's because you like sparkly things and you want to talk to female entrepreneurs. And that's why you decided to start a podcast. There are all these different things that you can choose that make you different. So it's just learning how to put those into practice and put them into your messaging. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And I feel like this is something that we always talk about on the podcast without actually naming it. So I'm really happy mm -hmm. that we are talking about like what this actually is today. So why is this important in your branding and your marketing? Essentially, this is your sparkly, dazzling personality. This is what sets you apart from competitors. And it's ultimately what is going to help your brand get noticed amongst all of the other noise out there. So, you know, Without one of these in place, you're essentially just another business doing the same thing. So you have to figure out what is the thing that makes your business different? What do you align with the most? And really lean into that in your business. So you want to make sure that you are truly standing out from the crowd. You are unique. You know, you are putting something out there that is memorable, that people can kind of like tap into to be like, absolutely, yes, I want to support this company because they are doing X, Y, Z in a certain way. This is how you essentially differentiate your brand, attract the right people into your business, and essentially really create those like real loyal fans, those people that like go to their friends and start talking about you and like really kind of speak to your praises and ultimately makes your business memorable. Yeah, I think like you said, this, we always talk about like attraction and magnetism and like pulling the right people in and pushing the right people out. And this is actually how you do it. <laughs> you know, this is the, the how to part of it. So let's get into that. How do you find your USP? And the first step is to identify what makes you different, right? What makes you special? Is it your products? Is it your customer service? Is it, you know, are you sustainable and you're no waste and just do a brain dump about all of that stuff. And the other thing I would say is to tap into your own personality, depending on how much of you the brand is, because there could be things that are, it's just about you and the way you speak and the way you deliver your message that makes you different than everybody else in your industry. And so once you sort of have that list of like, okay, these are all the things that 
might make me different, right? And you, it's, it's just a brain dump. We're just getting started. The next step is to check out the competition, right? You want to take a look over the fence and see what other brands in your industry are doing. What are their USPs? Are you immediately able to pinpoint what they are? Or is it buried somewhere? Because that can also teach you a lot about where like the holes are in your business. So know what they're doing well and know what they're lacking on. And then our favorite thing that we always talk about is to know your ideal customer, right? Knowing what they're struggling with, their pain points, their desires, their limiting beliefs, all of that, that will help you determine a USP that really resonates with them, right? If, you know, saving the earth is like of utmost importance to them, then maybe sustainability is and the way you specifically do sustainability is the USP you should land on. And then we're going to take all that. We're going to put it together, right? Once you have all this information, you want to combine your unique qualities, your understanding of your customers and create a USP that's irresistible to your audience. We'll talk about what this actually looks like in terms of messaging, but it literally, it can be just for you in the beginning. It can literally be like a messy run on sentence. That's not great. That is nothing near copy, but it, you understand what it means and why it makes you different. Yeah. And I feel like in an ideal world, like this is something something that should be like the first piece of like your branding process. You know, both of us work with this to a degree, you know, this should really be like the why of like your company, like why are you doing whatever you're doing in your business? So once you have that nailed down, it's important to really communicate that throughout your channel. So this should be going on your website, on your social media, throughout your marketing message. This should be shining through and pretty much everything that you do in your marketing. So I want to talk about a few different ways that you can and do this like in marketing. So obviously your brand messaging is one of the easiest ways to get this across. So, you know, whether it is in your tagline, on your about page, in your product descriptions, all of these kind of core values should be shining through in that messaging component. Also want to talk a bit about like your visual identity. So we go back to the sustainability kind of example, like maybe you're really passionate about eco-friendly products or something like that. You know, these are things that would play into the visual identity of the brand. So maybe you want to integrate, you know, some greens or blues or different uh, graphical elements into your visual identity, you know, figuring out what that is going to be for your brand and then tapping into that there. Maybe you're a luxury or elegant brand, right? Like maybe you go for a more sophisticated aesthetic. You probably are getting some mental images just listening to that of like, oh, this is a luxury brand or this is a sustainable brand and how those might visually look a little bit different. You also want to talk about like social media media. So, you know, using your social media platforms to talk about your brand story, highlight what makes you different, use it to showcase your products, use it for different customer interactions. I see so many brands on social that you really tap into that community element of like responding to people in a certain way. You know, you'll see this a lot with like family friendly brands, like they always respond in a certain way to people in social media and stuff. And I, I just find it so interesting as a marketer to kind of study those things. It's really all about like tapping into like what is the core of what that brand wants to say and how they can communicate that via, you know, commenting or, you know, whatever the case. Absolutely. And then some other content marketing beyond social media, like blog posts or podcasts, these are where that like search SEO can really help you too. We're just going to go with the sustainability. We're committed to that now. If say you have, you make like all natural deodorant, what kind of questions is your ideal customer looking for? What are they Googling? And then you write a blog post about that. You get free traffic. You don't have to deal with any of the social media algorithms, ads, any of that. And it then allows you to like plant your flag in the sand even further and show that you stand for that. And like, oh, wow, look at all these resources they got on their website and they sell these great products. It's a win. Same thing with podcasting. These days, like the SEO in terms of podcasts and even just like audio recordings is so good that it doesn't really matter if you do a blog or a podcast. Another way is customer experience, right? It's how you interact with your customers. It's, you know, the product or the service you provide. If you're in the sustainable, maybe you offer no no waste packaging. Maybe you, you know, it's all recycled or you have like a return or buyback program for your containers. You know, it's really just like something different than what all the other deodorant companies are doing out there. And then another important thing is when you decide to do a partnership, a collaboration, some sort of, you know, influencer thing, make sure you're choosing people who also are very aligned with your USP. You see disconnects sometimes when you see, you're like, oh, really that person is talking about this brand? How much are they getting paid? How much, you know, 
know, that seems really out of alignment. And another thing to remember is your USP isn't set in stone. Your business is going to evolve. You're going to evolve. The market's going to evolve. You want to check in regularly and make sure it still aligns with you and your industry. So let's talk about a few examples of this so that people can, you know, actually visualize what we're talking about here. So first up, we want to talk about Apple. So this is one of my favorite examples because Apple is all about innovation, simplicity, and top-notch design. There's almost just like a prestige about their company. But with Apple, they're not really selling the technology as much as they're selling like the lifestyle, right? If you're an Apple user, like there's a an air about that type of person, right? Like there's strictly PC people and then there's Apple people. They have that tagline, think different, which totally encapsulates their commitment to innovation and their approach of putting design at the heart of their products. Yeah. The other thing, you know what I want to say before I, we go into the other examples is you can see how these are not like great pieces of copy. These are just like ideas and things that your company can get behind. So don't get hung up on like, it has to be a tagline or it has to be part of, you know, part of your website. This is like internal stuff. So another great example is Lush, which is like that mall cosmetics brand. This is kind of the sustainability one we're talking about where like, I think they use like almost zero packaging. It's all very, when you go into their store, it's bright, it's colorful, and it's all very tactile, right? You like wash your hands in there, you get to touch everything. And that's what makes them different from all the other mall stores where you can buy the same kind of stuff. So let's talk about Tesla. So Tesla's obviously a bit groundbreaking when it comes to electric car technology and sustainable energy solutions. And again, this is where they're not just selling a car, they're selling that vision and that innovation. And then the last one we want to talk about is Ben and Jerry's, right? It's not just ice cream. You think about, even you think about whatever your favorite Ben and Jerry's flavor, and there's literally a cause behind it. They also do a great job of making sure they're collaborating with the right people. Like all the people that they pick for their ice cream flavors are, you know, are very much involved in activism and that kind of thing. So these are our examples. We hope this is helpful. So if you're still feeling stuck about what makes your business unique, sometimes it's easier to talk to somebody else, to work with a professional, to help you get it out there and get it on paper. So I can help you. I help my clients with all types of foundational brand messaging from USPs to mission statements and brand values to naming and taglines. So if you want to explore what that looks like, you can slide on over to the show notes and you can find a link to book a call with me and we will unravel the mystery of your USP together. So that's our episode. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, stay sparkly.